Good afternoon. Good morning. Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming, joining us for this uh, webinar on the Mega Backdoor Roth. I'm Eric Restrepo, and this is Alana Brown. We are the specialists here. So probably maybe some of you have talked to us on the front end when you're setting up your accounts. We are super excited about this webinar. This webinar is part of a four part series. If you guys haven't seen the other webinars that we did, they've been really good, all about contributions, right? So a lot of ways to contrib contribute to your solo 401k, right? There's employee contributions, there's employer contributions. We've also talked about after tax contributions. And now today we're gonna talk about the mega backdoor Roth. It's a very exciting strategy. A lot of clients actually come to us just to execute this strategy. So um, our documents are very flexible. It allows you to execute the strategy. So we're gonna go over that in detail as well as, you know, as, well as like, why would you wanna do it, right? For some of you that don't know what it is, we're gonna go over what it is and also, you know, why it's valuable. So um, I see a bunch of people joining us here. Go ahead and let us know if you can see us and hear us okay. Just a quick tech check. And then as always, guys, post your questions down below. There's a little, uh, it says, ask a question. Feel free to use that as opposed to the chat box on the side or if it's over there. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, use the question box if you have questions. Let us know that you can see us in the chat box on the, on the right-hand side. Looks like they, they're saying they can hear us and see us. Awesome, awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, guys. We're going to get started with this presentation. And obviously, as always, we'll handle question and answer at the very end. All right, perfect. Can you see that? OK, Lana? I can. All righty, perfect. Awesome, awesome. OK, so. Solo 401k, we're covering the mega backdoor Roth. I know everyone's been waiting for this one. Quick disclaimer, like always, we are not the replacements for your CPA or your tax advisors. We are your IRS plan document providers, but of course we're here for education purposes. We love to do these webinars. We have all those different ways to get support from us. So our role is to educate you and provide you with a compliant plan. A little bit about us. So we launched the IRA LLC in 2003 and solo401k.com in 2006. We've had consistent IRS document approval for over 15 years. What's really awesome is all of us team members here at Neighbors Group, we all have our own checkbook control retirement plans. So. We know everything you're going through right now. You know, we're here to support you through this. And of course, our team works closely with the IRS and the Department of Labor to make sure that your documents are always up to date. This is very important. Of course, we never handle your money. Most of you know you are your own custodians. We specialize in full direction. What is that? It's that checkbook control. You are the one that is in control of your retirement funds and how they are invested. So let's go over a little review about contributions. I know this is our fourth training, so we like to do a little refresher. So if your small business is compensating you, you can contribute some of that money into a solo 401k. So you have the option, your contributions, they can be pre-tax, which is tax deductible, or after tax, which is Roth. Since you are both the business owner and the employer, you get these two types of contributions. You have your employee and your employer contributions. For the employee salary deferrals, it can be up to 100% of your compensation it's going to max out at 19500 and this can be pre-tax or Roth. If you're over 50 years old, you do get catch-up. For the employer profit sharing contributions, it's going to be either 20 or 25% of your net profits. This is depending on your business structure. So if you're a sole proprietor or an LLC, it's going to be 20%. Partnership, S-Corp, C-Corp, 
you're looking at 25%. Maximum contributions. So it's $58,000 per participant per year. This was for 2021. If you're over 50, you get catch up. So you can do 64,500. It's really important. Contributions are based on net compensation. So if you're a sole proprietor or an LLC, this is your Schedule C after deductions. S-Corp, C-Corps, these are your W-2 wages and partnerships. It's your K-1 line 14. If you're paying um, self-employment taxes, you can contribute. The more you earn, the more you can contribute. The mega backdoor uh, can be up to this full limit. Perfect. That's awesome. Yeah. So let's go over the mega backdoor Roth solo 401k. So what is it, right? It's essentially, it's a way to get that full maximum contribution, the 58,000, or if you're 50 or older, that full 64,500 over to a Roth 401k. It's similar. If you guys are familiar with a backdoor Roth IRA, it's the same exact concept. It's just a two-step process. So it's not a direct Roth contribution. That would be through the front door, right? Um, so this is the back door. So we make a non-deductible contribution, which is a voluntary after-tax contribution, and followed that with a in-plan Roth conversion. So instead of just a direct contribution, we're just doing two steps. So why not, you know, why not use the front door? It's a good question, right? So the front door is limited. So with direct Roth 401k contributions, they are limited to that 19,500 as an employee salary deferral. Also, you do get the catch up if you're 50 or older. So you can do up to 26,000 directly into the Roth. Obviously, keep in mind though, that salary deferral, if you've already done it for pre-tax, you can't do it for Roth again, right? So it's, it's a one or the other, or you can split it between those two. That's the reason why some people choose to do a backdoor Roth contribution. If they want to do it all, they can do it all, or they can do up to, you know, the difference. So the backdoor Roth, it allows them to do all the way up to that full maximum, that 58,000 or 64,500 if they're 50 or older. So why is it so valuable, right? Roth funds have a special designation that allows for tax-free distributions of your original investment and the gains, right? So Roth IRA, that designation was introduced in 1998. The Roth 401k came a little bit later in 2006. It was really a new advantage for retirement savings. And honestly, you know, as I've talked to other clients and, you know, we do get some internationals uh, that come here to the U.S., there's not a lot of other, actually, I don't think there's any other countries, I'm not sure exactly on that, but there's not very many countries that ha have that Roth de designation. Most of the accounts are pre-tax. So, and we're going to go over why that's special. Basically, you know, the difference is, right, with a pre-tax account, you know, you pay tax uh, on the harvest with the, with the Roth, you're going to pay tax on the seed. So you're paying, you're paying taxes and then you're, you're putting, you're contributing into the Roth with the, with the pre-tax account on the back end in retirement, you're, you're basically paying taxes on all of the original investment plus the gains, right? So kind of just weigh that and out in your mind, would you rather pay taxes on the seed or on the harvest? Because essentially the Roth contributions are like getting taxed on the seed. The traditional or the pre-tax contributions are like getting taxed eventually on the harvest, you know, when you're doing those distributions at retirement age. So, and the cool part about Roth, uh, you know, contributions, they're, if they're qualified, uh, those distributions are tax-free. So you have to be 59 and a half years old. You also must have been contributing for at least five years. Um, direct Roth contributions do start a five-year clock and it does not reset if you miss a year or contribute to a, another Roth account. So as long as you've had a Roth account open for five years and you've made a contribution, that counts as your five-year clock for contributions. If you do utilize the mega backdoor Roth, this is just a kind of like a finer point here, and you use that in-plan conversion, each, each unique conversion has its own five-year clock in order for distributions to be qualified. Okay. So that's more important. It's not so important for probably folks that are younger, but folks that are getting closer to, you know, time of distributions, 
just something to keep in mind when you're doing these the Roth mega backdoor Roth strategy. You are doing an in-plan conversion, so you do have that five-year waiting period in order for that distribution to be qualified. Okay. Great. Okay, let's go over the steps. So step one, we're going to do a little quick recap of voluntary after-tax contributions. So what are they? So voluntary after-tax contributions, it's a voluntary employee contribution. So contributions, they can be withdrawn penalty-free at any time. Contributions are not taxable, but the growth is taxable. So if you make a voluntary after-tax contribution and invest as is, the growth is taxable. So if you contribute $10,000, it grows to $15,000. You're going to, that $5,000 in growth is going to be uh, taxable upon distribution. So just like pre-tax contributions. Many participants um, will choose to convert these after-tax funds to Roth because the contributions, they're not starting out as Roth. So it's really important to remember while all Roth contributions are after tax, not all after tax contributions are Roth. Not uh, all plans allow for these types of contributions. Many of you guys have come to us because our plan is the most flexible and allows all the components that it does take for um, doing the mega backdoor Roth. So your solo 401k that you have with Neighbors Group, it has, you know, the voluntary after-tax contributions and in-plan Roth conversions. You absolutely need all of these strategies to complete this mega, all these components to complete the mega backdoor strategy. So limits for these kinds of contributions. So typically Roth contributions are limited to the 19,500 per year. Of course, $26,000 if you're over 50 years old. So you can contribute up to 100% of your net compensation as the voluntary after-tax contribution. So that means your maximum for that is going to be 58,000 or the 64,500. So this is per participant. So if your spouse is on the plan, you can each contribute the maximum. But you cannot exceed your maximum for the entire plan. So you're going to decide how to split up, you know, your $58,000 in contributions. Let's take a look at an example. Lisa is 44 years old and has an S Corp. She pays herself $100,000 in W-2 wages. She decides to contribute $100,000 for her employer contributions. She wants the rest of her funds to grow tax-free, so classified as Roth. Lisa can contribute $48,000 as voluntary after-tax contributions. How did we get that number? We took her max, which is that $58,000. She already contributed $10,000 for the employer contribution. So what's left over for that voluntary after-tax contribution? It's going to be $48,000. So voluntary after-tax contributions, they can be converted in plan to Roth. This allows Lisa to get more funds into her Roth 401k bucket than she otherwise would have not been able to do. So if she did not utilize this strategy of converting the after-tax contributions to Roth, she'd be limited to just that 19,500 for her Roth. So once Lisa completes her in-plan Roth conversion of those voluntary after-tax contributions, she now ends up with $48,000 as opposed to that 19,500. That's huge. That's more than double. Perfect. Absolutely. Yeah. So now we're going to go over step two, which is in detail that in-plan Roth conversion. So in-plan Roth conversions, uh, after that voluntary after-tax contribution you are made, you can choose to convert them to Roth funds. Now, you remember to use that form. It's the in-plan conversion document found in your dashboard. You'll also need to complete a 1099-R to document the conversion. 
it's not a taxable event, right? Um, there has, if there has not been any growth on those contributions to the after-tax bucket, so there's no taxes due. Once you once you've documented that conversion in your own plan records, you can just simply wire the funds or just transfer them from that voluntary after-tax account over to your Roth account. So this is that form. Uh, you guys, you guys will see that you're gonna just write in voluntary contributions on the form under part two. So that's simply one step. You just do that conversion form. And then the other part is just that to document this, you do need to file a 1099R. Couple of finer points about that. You know, it doesn't wanna be a PDF file when you file that. Also, you're only allowed to use approved filers that can submit that 1099R. You can check with your tax professional. They might be an approved filer. Also, we do have a whole list. We'll go ahead and probably post that in the chat here. Um, we have an article that goes over to the 1099R in detail, as well as we have some different providers that that do this file for a very nominal cost, it's very low. Uh, also, yeah, the 1099 article, we'll probably go ahead and post that. It's in the knowledge base. If you guys haven't checked out the knowledge base, it's amazing. It has tons of great resources in there, full-length articles, detailed explanations, videos going through almost everything you could possibly imagine about the solo 401k. Um, there is that detailed article about the 1099R. We'll go ahead and post that as well. Um, as your solo 401k administrator, you do have to furnish a copy of that form to yourself because you do have those multiple roles. Uh, you have to furnish that copy to yourself by January 31st. The IRS should also receive a physical copy by February 28th or an e-file of that form by April 1st. Now, your, you know, your tax professional uh, or online service is definitely going to help you accomplish this by that deadline. So you don't own any taxes. That's a big key to this. It's It was after-tax funds that were contributed, and then it was an in-plan conversion. So there's really no taxes due. Um, you, you know, your money, hopefully you didn't invest it in the after tax. If you did and it grew, then obviously there would be tax due on that growth. Um, the voluntary after tax contributions are really not reported on your personal tax return. Um, after tax contributions are also not really reported on the W-2. Some employers do list those after tax contributions amounts in box 14 of the W-2 for informational purposes. However, this is really optional because it's, again, it's not reducing your taxable income. Um, so it's really nothing that the IRS is really concerned about, right? The main thing is just to complete that in-plan conversion form and then document it with the 1099-R. Great, thank you, Eric. So pretty simple. I mean, two steps to really maximize those Roth funds. So let's discuss some best practices and logistics. So you'll want three bank accounts or brokerages per participant. So you'll have one for your traditional or pre-tax funds, one for the voluntary after-tax, and then one for the Roth. So why do you want all these bank accounts? It makes your role as the plan administrator, trustee, record keeper much easier on you. You know, we recommend this not for us. We're recommending it for you guys. It just makes your life much easier. Having these distinct bank accounts, it allows for each tax classification to remain separate. So you can actually do these strategies and know exactly what you're doing. So definitely recommend having a bank account for each different tax classification. Let's look at Lisa's example again. So Lisa decides to contribute the $10,000 for her employer contributions. That's always going to be pre-tax traditional. She wants the rest to be Roth. So she's going to contribute that 48,000 as voluntary after-tax contributions. The numbers look like this. We went over that. So she's going to get $48,000 as those voluntary after-tax contributions. How does this work? There's her three bank accounts. She has one for the pre-tax traditional, one for the voluntary after-tax, and one for the Roth. She'll make her employer profit sharing contributions right to that pre-tax bucket. And then that $48,000 is going to into her voluntary after-tax bucket. She's letting it sit there, not doing any trading. It is just sitting there for a few days. And then she's simply moving it over to the Roth bucket 
and completing the in-plan Roth conversion. So Lisa needs to do an in-plan conversions because she has to reclassify those voluntary after-tax contributions to Roth. So remember, I just love this saying, <laughs> while all Roth contributions are after-tax, not all after-tax contributions on Roth are Roth. So we are very much a stickler for um, the correct usage of words. I know you'll hear us say, you know, if you're talking about your solo 401k and if you say IRA to us, we're like, it's not an IRA, it's a solo 401k, 401k. So it's just really important to get this terminology correct. So not all after tax is Roth. So if Lisa did not convert these funds over to Roth, she'd be paying taxes on the growth of those contributions. So after tax contributions are tax free, but the growth on those is going to be taxable. I won't repeat that again. <laughs> oh, Eric, take it away. The recap yeah. is all yours. Yeah, yeah. So all Roth contributions are after tax, but not all after tax. We're going to just keep saying that to you guys because <laughs> it's super important to drum in. Um, you know, not all after tax contributions are Roth, right? Roth is a designation. So it's it's a special designation that we talked a little bit about that, but it allows for quali when qualified distributions are pulled from a Roth bucket, they're completely tax-free, including the original principal, the original contributions, any conversions, and the growth. So a great place to do those uh, high-growth investments, right? Those investments that are going to be high flyers, because if you pull them out as a qualified distribution, you're never going to pay taxes on all of those gains. So what a beautiful, what a beautiful account. So voluntary after-tax contributions allow you to increase your Roth funds drastically, right? We talked about that. You can only do a limited amount directly. So that's why we use the back door. Uh, you can contribute up to that 58,000 in voluntary after-tax contributions, and then funds need to be converted to Roth in order to reap the benefits of tax-free distributions. So just a real quick visual recap. You put those funds in their own after-tax designated bank or brokerage account. Uh, you wait a couple days. You move those funds from after-tax designated bank account to Roth designated bank account. That's through that in-plan conversion. And then the final step is filing that IRS form 1099-R to document the conversion. So if you guys have any questions at all, any additional questions, if you need support, we're here for you guys. Uh, lots of ways to get support. We obviously have the network. If you guys haven't joined that, you should definitely do that. All of the events are posted in there. Uh, all these trainings that we do, uh, they're all posted in that network. You can also ask questions in there. We post relevant articles that we write. We also post relevant news articles about the markets. So it's a great place to get information about the Solo 401k. Also, our website, solo401k.com. If you guys haven't been there, you should definitely check it out. It's like a virtual encyclopedia for the Solo 401k. Um, and then also our knowledge base, that's support.solo401k.com. That is a searchable database of articles, videos, helpful step-by-step -step guides, tutorials, and even PDF downloadables. So all kinds of great information there. Definitely use those ways to get support, guys. And if you guys are new to us, if you're uh, if you're not a client, you can also get a, a free 30-minute consultation with myself or Alana. Uh, go to solo401k.com slash consult, um, or you can just call us at 877-SOLO401K or visit our website, neighbors.com or solo401k.com. Perfect. So I think we're going to open it up for some Q&A. Looks like we've got a few questions that came in. First one, looks like it came from Ed. Ed's question, he says, is there anything better than BTC setting in your Roth 401k account? Gosh, I, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like that's more of a comment. And um, that's a rhetorical yeah. question. <laughs> yes. But you know, that being said, um, we just started a partnership with Gemini. I'm gonna post it in the chat. For anyone that does not have, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, any of that crypto in their 401k yet, um, we will set up your account for you. 
We will make it super, super easy. We'll get that account open in about three days. Also, there's their transaction fees. The 1% of the transaction fee will be waived for the first 60 days. After that, it's 1.35%. Uh, and you know why we chose Gemini? They have great security and protection. Um, it really is just a great platform. And opening up these accounts can be a little bit of a pain. So we wanted to solve that problem. And that is why we partnered with Gemini. And okay. also, Eric is going to do um, a webinar tomorrow all about crypto. So if anyone is interested or you don't know that much about it, definitely join him and Rachel. Absolutely. Okay. The next question comes from Craig. I filed my 2020 taxes last week before the October 15th deadline for my extension, uh, for my extension as a sole proprietor. Can the mega backdoor Roth contribution still be made for tax year 2020? Yeah, good question, Craig. Um, it ha are your, all your contributions need to be made by your tax filing deadline. So it would be a little late to do that for this year, but the good news is that you can go ahead and execute it for 2021. Plenty of time to do that. That can be done all the way until you file taxes for you know 2021. So that'd be all the way until if you file an extension for your sole proprietor uh, ship, then you can do it all the way till October 15th of 2022. Another question from FB he said, I created my solo, my self-directed solo 401k in 2021. I can only use earnings from this year to make contributions, correct? Yeah, FB, that's, that is correct. You can use your 2021 contribution. So great question. Another question from FB, assuming one is the same tax bracket during, assuming one is in the same tax bracket during earning years as they are in retirement, there is no benefit in having a Roth mega backdoor Roth, correct? Um, <laughs> I think that's something for you to evaluate on an individual basis. Um, you know, yeah, we're probably not giving too much strategic advice here, but like just telling you the capabilities, right? So the Roth, just know that the Roth bucket can pull out money all tax-free as long as it's qualified. So if you've had the account for four, for five years, been making contributions and you're 59 and a half years old, um, then it's qualified with those in-plan conversions. It has its own unique five-year clock. So you would need to wait the five years from each individual conversion. Uh, as long as that's the case, all growth, all original principal, all conversion value is all tax-free on distribution. So, um, I think it probably depends on your investment strategy, your goals, uh, probably like you're saying, your tax bracket plays into that as well. Um, so, so something to definitely strategize with your CPA, accountant. Um, anything to add there, Alana? No, I think that that's great. Perfect. And I got a question from Jennifer. She said, what is the best way to convert pre-tax 401k into Roth? Yeah, the best way is definitely to work with your CPA. But what is great is that you can. Our plans allow for the in-plan conversion. So this is not, you know, the mega backdoor Roth. You're simply doing an in-plan conversion. So it's as simple as just, you know, moving those funds from your pre-tax bucket into your Roth bucket. If you haven't yet established like an account for your Roth funds, open up an additional bank account or brokerage account the same way you did for your pre-tax funds. So just have this additional account, move those funds over, and of course, fill out the in-plan conversion, then the 1099-R. This is a taxable event, you know, as opposed to the voluntary after-tax moving over to the Roth, that's not a taxable event, but for the conversion on the pre-tax to the Roth, you will pay taxes, but you will have lots of benefits if that is something that you want to do. Perfect. Great question. Really good question. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next question comes from Luke. In the literature about the mega backdoor Roth, I sometimes read warnings about the pro rata rule. Am I right that this is not applicable in the in-plan conversion in the solo 401k? Yes. 
You are right. Absolutely. So the pro rata rule only applies to, I mentioned it only really briefly, but you can execute a meg. It's not the mega backdoor. It's just the backdoor Roth IRA. And in IRAs, which again, like Alana said, terminology really matters, right? So in an IRA or an individual retirement account, that pro rata rule does apply. So if you have a, a, a traditional balance that was pre-tax, when you go to do that implant or that convert, it's not an implant conversion. This is just a conversion over to Roth. There is a pro rata rule where you have to convert a certain amount of those pre-tax funds along with the after tax. With the solo 401k, that is not the case. So uh, you can just convert because it's a separate bucket in the plan. It's an actual voluntary after tax bucket for you as the employee of your plan or, par or participant. You can just simply make that contribution. And then just like we talked about, do the end plan conversion and there's no need to convert other funds uh, unless you want to, right? So, um, but yeah, great question. No pro rata rule with the solo 401k. Um, okay, another question from FB, can a Roth IRA distribution, contribution not growth, you be used as funds for a voluntary after-tax contribution for the mega backdoor Roth conversion? It's a little bit of a confusing question, but um, from what I'm reading, um, your di your distributions can't count then as contributions. So, and also remember for a, a Roth IRA, you are limited to your six or $7,000 in contributions a year. Remember guys, we're talking about a Roth IRA, <laughs> not the Roth 401k. Um, so um, what you're trying to do is, is, is not doable. Anything to add there, Eric? Yeah, yeah. I just think, you know, contributions for the for the solo 401k FB, just remember, they have to come from the sponsoring business that sets up the 401k plan. So, um, you know, social security distributions from other retirement accounts that can't be con that can't be contributed into the solo 401k. Um, so. So, yeah, no, absolutely. Good question. But yeah, that's that's not going to be possible. <laughs> Okay, the next question comes from Jennifer. What is the best way to convert? Oh, we already addressed that one, I think. Yeah. Yeah, we did that one. Additional okay. IRA into Roth IRA. Yeah, just the conversion. You just pay the taxes and move it over, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, okay. I'll read this one for you. So this is from Jason. Uh, when does the voluntary after-tax contribution need to be made for a given tax year? Does the conversion need to be done in the same tax year as the after-tax contribution is made? Yeah, that's a great question, Jason. Um, as far as I understand, I don't think it had the conversion has to happen at any particular time. As long as the after-tax contribution was made before your tax deadline, the in-plan mm -hmm. conversion could happen later on, right? The our plan allows for unlimited in-plan conversions. The key factor, I think, is just you, you probably don't want to invest those after-tax funds because then, you know, uh, if you were to move them over, uh, the growth would all be taxable, right? Um, so, but I don't know of any specific deadline for when you have to do an in-plan conversion. That's a voluntary activity for you as the plan trustee or the plan administrator to go ahead and do uh, and for, for you as the participant. Yeah. Yeah. Great question. Yeah. And yeah. I guess I, I would ask myself, you know, why wouldn't you move it over? What's the point of, you know, leaving it there kind of thing. So maybe yeah. ask yourself that questions because you don't want to really invest with it because you don't want to have to pay the gains. But like we say, these are your plans, you know, invest and contribute as you want. Yeah, exactly. It's, Kind of like what's what's more based on what's your goals, right? If mm -hmm. if you want to get those funds invested, you probably should do the in-plan conversion, and then once they're in the Roth, then go ahead and just invest them, right? So, but um, but yeah, it's your plan. So yeah, just according to the rules, I think you'd you'd be okay uh, to wait. But but we're you know why would yeah. you want to, right? <laughs> so a uh, question from Venkata. Do we need to do uh, any documentation for in-plan Roth rollover to a Roth IRA? Yeah, 
Great question. Um, so as you guys know, a Roth IRA cannot roll into this solo 401k, Roth 401k, but you can roll your Roth 401k out to a Roth IRA. So for that, yes, like anytime you move funds around in and out of your 401k, you do need to do that 1099R. So you can go ahead and take a look at our resources about the 1099R and you can move those funds from your Roth 401k out to your Roth IRA. So great question. Yeah. The next question comes from Jeremy. Once an in-plan conversion is complete, then that money can be rolled over to a Roth account somewhere else, such as a Vanguard Roth account or your or the Fidelity Roth account. Yeah, good question, Jeremy. Yeah, so I mean, we didn't really go over it in depth today, but with your solo 401k, you can have, um, you know, you can have multiple accounts at different places, right? Depending on your goals for investment, you might have a brokerage account. You also might have just a regular bank account. It's not going to be a bank account in your personal name. It'll still, all the accounts need to be titled in the name of your solo 401k trust. So, so that all the money stays technically underneath the, that umbrella of your 401k plan. But yeah, you could have uh, different accounts. You could execute this strategy in like your bank accounts. And then once it's in the Roth, you could move it over to a, some an account designated as Roth 401k over at, you know, Fidelity or at Vanguard. Um, so as long as you're just keeping, you know, like tax classifications with other like tax, tax classifications, you're going to be totally fine. Just keep in mind, you're the, you know, you're the plan administrator. So you just want to keep detailed records that yeah you can definitely 100 percent move it between platforms you know roth funds stay with roth funds traditional funds stay with traditional funds and then um you know invest them how you want to yeah yeah exactly and then also you know if you're moving from like your trust checking account roth bucket to your fidelity roth bucket you don't have to do any 1099 r's or anything um there's no you know reporting but you may want to, you know, have on your spreadsheet, you know, you moved from your Roth bucket from your trust account over to your Fidelity. So that's something you might want to do as the, you know, the plan administrator. Then we got a question from Tom. He said, does Gemini allow for transfers directly from solo 401k trust bank account, or does it need to come from solo 401k LLC bank account? Great question. Yeah, no, you could absolutely use your trust bank account. So a lot of you guys out there, you have, you know, your LLC that's with your solo 401k. It's an asset. It's not your business. Um, and then you also have your trust name. Um, if you're going to, if you want to use your trust funds, make sure that you're setting up your Gemini account in the name of your trust and just wire the funds from your trust checking account to your new Gemini trust account. If you want to use your LLC um, name and funds, Make sure when you're signing up, use your LLC name on the application, and then funds will come from your LLC account to the LLC Gemini account. So great question there, Tom. Yeah, great question. Question from Raymond. I do not currently have an operating business. How do I start to create a Roth 401k? Yeah, great question, Raymond. Yeah, so um, you're... You do have to, to, to have a solo 401k, you do have to have a business that sponsors a solo 401k. That does not have to be like a formal business. It can be just 1099s. As long as it's self-employment income, then you can qualify to have a solo 401k. A lot of our clients start out as like a sole proprietor, right? So they're just doing business in their personal name. So it could just be Raymond, you know, your last name, right? Your just first and last name. And then you just would select sole proprietor. As long as you get those 1099s, I mean, you could literally drive for Uber. You could have, you could do Grubhub. Um, any kind of side business, side income qualifies to have a solo 401k. So that's how you can start contributing to Roth. And your first uh, 19,500 of contributions can go directly to Roth, uh, and that can be up to 100% of your net compensation. So. All of that, if you have a side gig, all of it can be put into the solo 401k. So pretty cool. Great. And also, Raymond, if you have some Roth IRA funds floating out there and you're looking to invest in maybe alternative investments, we do offer a self-directed Roth IRA. 
So it's completely separate. You know, you, you won't be able to do like this, get all this mega backdoor Roth funds of $58,000, but it's a great option if you're looking for alternative investments. So if you have any questions, you know, send us an email, use our, our scheduling link. Um, it's all posted up at, up Actually, we'll repost it so you can have a link to our scheduling link and email us. We can go over your specific uh, situation. Got a question from Jim Woods. It says, uh, the Gemini IRA setup uh, you do, does it have additional fees to Gemini fees? What is the 1.25% fee? Okay, so it is, it's a it's a 1.35 per transaction. So that's the only fees that you'll see. So every time you buy or sell, you'll have that 1.35 transaction fee. Yeah, and we waived, we actually waived our commission on that, uh, Jim, for the first 60 days. So it's just a 0.35% for the first 60 days. And then after that, it's just 1.35%. And that's just on buys and sells. So that's not on holding it. So if you're holding it on exchange, there's no fee for that at all. Um, I know Gemini, I was just looking at this and I think we're going to add some more detail there. If you do want like cold storage, like more of a, you know, deep cold storage option, Gemini already has pretty amazing security. Most of their, uh, their coins, their crypto is not even held uh, on like a hot wallet in general. Um, so it's very secure platform in general, but if you want additional storage for your specific coins, I believe they charge like 0.4% to hold it in cold storage. Um, anyways, we can we can maybe shoot some more information. I know we're going to update that uh, that form and that page to have more information about the Gemini offering. But yeah, it's just at this point, first 60 days, 0.35% on buys and sells. And then after that, 1.35% on buys and sells. We have a question from um, G Fish. So I have funds in my traditional 401k. I would need to identify percent that was contributed versus percent that was ROI on those funds and only move the contributions, not the ROI to Roth. So when you're doing an in-plan conversion, you're just going to, you know, you'll be reporting how much you're moving over. So it's not really a percentage. It's like the amount. So maybe you're going to move over $10,000. So if you're doing that, then that's what's going to fall on your tax return. And that's what you'll be paying the taxes on. So I don't think you have to look at your return on investment. It's just how much are you converting into Roth, you know, USD wise. Yeah. I think she might be asking about the five-year rule. Um, okay. The five-year rule on qualified distributions from a Roth uh, account uh, on that conversion. So it doesn't matter if on the pre-tax side, it doesn't matter if that's growth or contributions. Once the value is converted, it's the value that's converted that now has its own individual clock of five years to be able to be qualified. So, uh, and then, you know, on that side of things, and once it's in the Roth, then in order for all of it to be qualified, including the growth in the Roth, that's where that five-year clock applies. The actual converted value can always be withdrawn. That can always be withdrawn tax-free, tax just to be clear, clear on that. It's just on the on the growth that it has to be the five year waiting period. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have another question, just let us know. Awesome. Thank you, Eric, for that clarification. And then we got a question from Raymond. He said, Are the are there annual filings with the IRS or DOL for the solo 401k? Yeah, great question. So there's only one requirement for the solo 401k. It's called Form 5500 EZ. It's due when your account is at $250,000 or more. It includes your whole solo 401k. So if your spouse is on there, your spouse's funds as well. Um, simple form. And guess what? We help you with that. So no need to worry too much about that form 5,500. Easy. Good question. Next question is from Jeremy. As a follow-up. So I think what I'm hearing is that I shouldn't take Roth funds from my neighbor's solo 401k and roll them into my personal Roth IRA under my own name at a brokerage house. Yeah, I mean, um, that's a that's a personal decision if you're going to roll money out of the plan. I will say if it was directly contributed as Roth, I think there may be rules around doing a doing a uh, an in-service rollover. So like while you still have your plan open, 
Um, you know, I'm not sure you can just roll funds out of the plan unless you have a qualifying event. Um, but if you're talking about the after-tax contributions, then yes, you can, you can um, instead of moving it to an in-plan conversion, you can do an after-tax contribution and then move it to a Roth IRA. That's more of a, I think it's more of a strategic question, really. Like, why would you want to put it in the Roth IRA as opposed to doing the in-plan conversion? Um, because then eventually, like, that Roth IRA can't be moved back into the solo, right? So, um, so that's more of a, probably a question just to think about strategically if you need the funds in the solo or if you want them in your IRA. Um, you know, just something to consider. Yeah. And I think a lot of people like to start moving it out to a Roth IRA when it's time for RMDs because there's no RMDs yeah. in the Roth IRA, but definitely something to think about. You know, always ask yourself, why, why am I doing something? What's the benefit? Yeah. If you roll out of the solo 401k, you lose the benefit of investing in so many different things. Yeah. yeah. Good question, Jarvis. And then Lisa's, um, so, oh, sorry. FB has a question. Lisa's sponsoring business is a car wash. She also has a side hustle as Uber driver. Lisa cannot make voluntary after-tax contributions from her income as an Uber driver, correct? No, she might be able to, FB, because, you know, as an Uber driver, she's most likely getting 1099 income. So um, you could actually add an additional business to your plan. Um, so that's something that Lisa might want to do because maybe she's not quite at that 58,000 where she can contribute. So maybe adding that additional business might help her. Um, there are certain circumstances or there's there are times where you can have two solo 401ks, but there's something called controlled group. And it's definitely something um, to ask your CPA about um, because there's, there's some thought that needs to go involved in there if it's allowed. There's some IRS rules. So I hope that helps. I think we lost Eric. Am I here? You, I, I can still see myself. Yeah, I can hear you. I just can't see you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, this one's coming from David. He said, could you guys please rewrite the support page on the Roth mega backdoor as if you're explaining to a six-year-old? <laughs> he said, it's honestly super convoluted. David, I can understand. It's It's definitely... It can feel like a complicated strategy. Hopefully this webinar helped. Um, but yeah, uh, maybe that'll be on our to-do list to rewrite that article as well. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to check it out. It's it's a complex strategy. Like that's that's yeah. just, that's just that. You know, we, we always recommend you want to work with your CPA because there is some work involved. But yeah, we'll take a look. We always like feedback, even if it's negative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tom says, you guys are freaking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Let's see. We got maybe one more here. Oh, no. Yeah, we already handled that one, looks like. Oh, wait. No, it's a, it's additional. No. Oh, Lisa works. So, again, from FB, you said Lisa still <laughs> works at the car wash but is not an Uber driver. Lisa has rental income from her rental properties. Is this considered... From the sponsoring business um so typically rental properties that is going to fall on your schedule e as an edgar and that doesn't qualify passive income does not qualify for contributions into your solo 401k it also doesn't qualify you to have a solo 401k if you're looking for schedule c income or like we said earlier you're an s corp c corp you're paying yourself w-2 wages i don't know is lisa paying herself a management fee and giving herself some w-2 income if so, she can make higher contributions. So good question. Thank you for taking our example. That's fun. <laughs> Thanks, mm -hmm. FB. And then Sophie asks, do you have the replay of this seminar? I actually posted, um, and I'll post it again. There's a way to get all of our replays. It's going to be on our um, in our network. So there's some really great ones there. I'll repost it. Uh, let's see. Yeah. The, uh, David asked if uh, I said a number of the webinars can't be replayed. David, sometimes if it's a series, um, if it's a series, there's a, 
There's actually a drop down menu at the top left where you can see multiple events from past. Um, so if we did it as a series, you just have to go to that drop down and select the previous days or dates of those events. And then you'll be able to see uh, the older, older training. So I think that might be what he's talking about. Do you think uh -huh. that's what he's talking about? I think that is what he's talking about. It is a little confusing. So you'll just have to look up at like the top corner and you'll see a drop down. It's not as obvious as it should be. Yeah, maybe we could do, we'll probably do some kind of explainer on that. Let's see, we got one more question that popped in from Matt. Um, he said, can monies in a variable annuity be transferred to a solo 401k? They can, right? Eric, you know this a little better than I do. Yeah, <laughs> Take it Matt, it depends, Matt, if, it, if it's in a qualified plan or, or a, like an IRA structure, then yes. If it's just like a, if it's just like an annuity sitting out in, you know, non-qualified, like sitting out, like it came from, you know, maybe cash uh, or some other purchase, then no. Um, but if it's, but if it's inside of a, like if it's in like a 401k plan or an IRA um, or other kind of qualified plan, then yes, hundred percent. So, you know, you would, uh, you'd probably end up being like liquidating that, that annuity inside of the IRA and then, you know, doing a rollover. Right. So, um, but yeah, definitely possible if it's inside of that qualified account. Awesome. Okay, another question from Jean Fish. She said, um, what if it was an annuity that was generated from a former pension plan? So same thing, yeah, you, you can. So any kind of, um, if it was in a pension, if it was in a 457, 403B, um, you know, TSP, there's all kinds, as long as it's a qualified plan, uh, it can be rolled into the solo 401k. So yeah, absolutely. That can definitely be rolled in. And then Matt had a follow-up. He said, my wife does not have a current solo 401k, but has money in the retirement funds. She is a housewife now. Can she create a solo 401k without a current job and then roll over the funds? Well, Matt, do you, I feel like you have a solo 401k with us. Um, if you do, Matt, maybe she can be on your plan with you, um, but you'd have to compensate her. Um, so, you know, if you want to be a participant on a plan, you do have to have compensation. That's the only way to roll funds into the solo 401k. Yeah, but and then the other way, Matt, is if she wants to do a checkbook IRA. So individual retirement accounts, she 100% qualifies for that. Everybody does, as long as uh, she does have, you know, some kind of, earned income, she can contribute to it, but she doesn't even have to contribute to it, right? She can, as long as she has money already in another uh, retirement plan, so whether it's an IRA or it's a Roth IRA, she can set up a checkbook control IRA plan with us and then just roll the money into that plan and start doing self-directed investing. So yeah, he said he does have a solo 401k. So yeah, a couple, couple options there, Matt, you could compensate her out of your business or doing some kind of work for you. And then she can participate on your plan and do contributions and roll over funds. Uh, or she could have her own, you know, Roth IRA or IRA, depending on what kind of funds those are. Awesome. And I did post over here um, the three ways for you guys to get support since we're coming to an end here. If you guys have any further questions, also a reminder of um, Eric and Rachel's crypto webinar tomorrow. It'll, it's going to be pretty awesome. So definitely join us. Perfect. A lot of great questions today. Mm -hmm. I know this is uh, somewhat of a complex strategy, guys, but um, really, hopefully we distilled it down into manageable parts and pieces, really just two steps, right? A couple other extra forms to file to document it, but really it's just that uh, voluntary after-tax contribution followed by that in-plan Roth conversion. So we'll give it just maybe another minute or so here. 
see if any other questions pop in. Yeah, glad this was helpful. We we really enjoy doing these webinars. So also if there's other topics you guys are interested in, let us know because it's more fun for us too if you guys want to hear it and you have these good questions. So, you know, post it to the network, email us. Yep, yep. Yeah, and if you guys didn't check out the other videos in this series, definitely go back and watch. We did uh, one on employee uh, salary deferrals, all about that. One on profit sharing contributions, all about that. And then we did do another one about after tax contributions. So a lot of good information about contributions. And that's the beauty of the solo 401k. So many different ways to contribute to it, right? There's a lot of different ways to make those contributions. Perfect. Well, looks like no other questions for today. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us and uh, hopefully we'll see you guys on the next webinar. Awesome. Have a great day. Take care guys.